Hello, my name is Greg, and welcome back to this flipping furniture. For this furniture flip, I'm going to take this piece of furniture and turn it into this. The customer had a little bit of a request for a nautical theme, and he has asked me several times to do a piece for him. So when I got this piece, I contacted him. And that's when he told me he would like to have a nautical theme. I sometimes forget that I started this channel to incorporate a little bit of woodworking into furniture flipping. And these veneers, I've, I guess I've kind of become known for making veneers and putting them on furniture. And, and veneers used to be a sign of a cheap or not a well-built piece of furniture. And and I think it's our job as furniture flippers or woodworkers to educate the customers that a veneer really allows us to have access to more exotic woods. We could never really afford to make any dresser or furniture out of. So really adding veneers gives us the ability to take a piece of furniture and make it into something completely different. These are thin and individual veneers. So you look right through there, you can see the crease of that veneer. You can see it again right there. Here's the other one. There's multiple ways to deal with these veneers when they're peeling like that. Clearly can't be sanded. Um, to be restained. We, we could put Bondo in there and smooth all that out and, and paint the sides. I'm going to buy this dresser and I pick up on that. Look at the amount of play that's in that. It doesn't come across as a real quality piece of furniture. Two things come to mind. The first option is Bondo or wood putty. Then the second option is some type of veneer. So for this piece, I'm thinking of two possible options. First would be to cut a piece of plywood, like you see right here. Now this is a half inch, but we could use a quarter inch and glue that onto there, and that would offer some stability. But as we just talked about, I like putting on veneers. For this piece, I have two things in mind, either wormy maple or bobinga. If I was just going to do the drawers, I would probably uh, use the bobinga, have some of that wormy maple around. And the reason I'm considering that as well, and I won't decide until after I sand this, this top down. So what we're going to work on next is sanding this. The only thing they wanted was that color. This Dixie Bell, the Golf, that's going to be the color we use. And it's sort of this nautical theme, which I believe that wormy maple will tie in a little bit better. This, this maple will look better with this color in the nautical theme. What we're going to do is get this thing washed up, cleaned up. We're going to sand the top of that and see what we have if we need to make the veneers. All right, close your eyes. Don't look at my car. I see you looking. But we have um, this maple here. And I believe that's where we maple too. But I kind of like the figure. This is actually a 1979 Camaro. Uh, my grandfather actually bought one for me when I was in high school. And now that I aged myself, my wife is convinced that it's a midlife crisis, but now you know what I do with the money from the furniture flip. And we're using TSP. All right, as I told you, there's a lot of video footage, so I skipped all the cleaning. Let's go ahead and get right to work.
So these are the bottom drawers, the larger drawers. And at this point, I had already decided to put veneers on the top drawers. So these, I wanted to clean up the dovetail joints. Those are gonna be exposed. So a little bit of sawdust and some glue put in there makes the dovetail joints, or actually in this case, the half blind dovetail joints um, look brand new, nice and tight. Uh, looks like clean cuts uh, with the dovetails, so it's a nice little technique to uh, make those dovetails look brand new. Right here, I'm adding some stripper onto the front of those bottom drawers. And you've seen earlier how thick that polyurethane was on there. I sanded these for a long time. What I was hoping to do here was even out that stain a little bit. That polyurethane was so thick on there. So that stripper did a decent job of evening out that leftover stain, but of course we see the big color difference here. I'm gonna put a little bit of bleach on this and let it sit for a minute and see if we can't even these out a little bit. It's so hot, it's evaporating pretty quickly and soaking into that wood quite a bit. Let that bleach sit on there for a little bit and it uh, evened out the color quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and try and sand these. So, so if you watch my sanding video, we'll start with 80 grit, work our way up to 220 on the front of these. Give it a nice smooth fit. I can feel a lot of variation in this wood, so it might be a little bit more sanding than I anticipated. And what I mean by variation in the wood, when you're sanding, especially with these orbital sanders, they spin in and kind of oscillate back and forth. So if there's any low or shallow spots or high spots, it tends to pull the sander just a little bit in that direction. So if you keep just a, a firm but light grip on the sander, you can actually feel when you're ready to move up when you're using this lower grit sandpaper. And there's our low spot right through there. So not horrible, but do have a little bit of sanding to do. But also, we need a zero clearance guard. So that doesn't allow a thin piece of veneer to fall down in, in, the, in the guard. And then we also need to make sure our saw is 90 degrees to the table. Just uh, angle finder gauge, a solid 90 degrees just past a quarter inch. So there's the width that we'll be cutting those veneers. Now on the wider ones, I use those for the structural integrity, these quarter inch um, boards. For like the drawers, it, it's pretty thin and we don't need to add necessarily structural integrity to the drawers and multiple passes just to take a little bit off each time we, we do that just because it's safer to do that it's it's pretty tough cutting through this maple it, it's wormy maple it's a little bit softer but but still pretty hard on this little saw and we'll run the boards through like so we'll run them through and then flip it back through this way again that way the cut side stays on this side and keep your fingers out of the way and we won't cut all the way through. When we're done, we'll have, oh, eighth inch or so where we can just take a handsaw and cut that through. It makes this cut much, much safer. We have our veneer there with just that little bit to cut through and we'll have ourselves a full piece of veneer.
a little bit of sanding to do, get rid of the saw marks. If you take a look at that little clamp that I'm screwing down right there, uh, that system is called a T-track system. And when I built this table, I almost did not put that in. But I find that I use that clamping system multiple times on every project. And there we have our veneer. All right, here's where we have to start making decisions on our veneer. So what we see here are half blind dovetails. Dovetails don't go all the way through. So we have a, a couple of things we could do. Obviously the front is fairly straightforward and then the top we'll put a, a veneer there and then, but we want to deal with these sides. A really thin veneer is a, a good idea. It'll never really break because um, it's so thin and if you get good glue down you can actually veneer this whole piece if there's room that looks nice uh, we could just cover the dovetails if put dovetails in there we kind of want to show them off it takes almost a paper thin veneer to cover those when you look at the sides but typically the veneer it has to start somewhere uh, you can actually um, extend this piece of wood up and make it flush with the top of the this bowl this board here if you want there's just a number of things that you can do and I noticed here one of these are two separate pieces of wood and I noticed that because that crack right there and that runs straight down there so I know these were glued together not necessarily a bad thing but I'm glad I'm putting those veneers on the front with this I think what I'm going to do is check the width. And what we see is plenty of wiggle room. So we can run a veneer right down the side of these and make that whole drawer appear to be figured maple. On more expensive saws, you can get a better feather board. And that's what I'm tightening there. And that feather board keeps good pressure against the wood in order to make that cut a consistent thickness. And with feather boards, it's important to have that feather board behind the saw blade, so closer to you as the saw operator. And what that does is, is one, it makes the cut a consistent thickness so the board is not wavering away from or off of the fence. And also kickback occurs when the, the board gets pinched in between the blade and the fence. And just kind of match up the pieces that might go together well. So these look pretty good so we'll pair these up and I actually kind of sorted them when I was stacking them so these look pretty good so those look pretty good together and sometimes I just uh, tuned my saw blade so sometimes these joints will have a little not real straight cuts on them and you can just run them back through there and straighten them up so they go together nicely so we'll get these put on the sides and get them sanded Now when putting these on, we'll take that front piece and line it up right with that. So you can just put this right flush with the front of that drawer. And in this heat, this glue, you don't have a whole lot of time to work.
That's a bummer. textures. You don't have to worry too much about the gaps that we see right here. I don't spend as much time, especially on like the side of the drawers like this. It's not going to be seen really that much at all. We've done this a couple of times on this channel. Get it down in there. Wipe a little bit of the excess off because this is a pretty decent seam really just makes it impossible to see looks like solid piece giving some thought to this i think i try a little bit of a white wash but i may end up having to redo it something a little different i'm going to do a uh, just a typical white wash and then I'm going to do a thin a blue on top of that. And I'm hoping that the white will get down into these little grooves. And then the blue we're just going to put on real light across the top to hopefully tie in and match with this area that I'm going to paint. So we'll see how that turns out. So since I decided to whitewash this, I just have a little bit of bleach watered down. If I can, a little bit of this dirt out of there so it's a crisper, cleaner color. You can see the color difference in the wood. I'm gonna wipe this off and then let that darker stuff sit on there just a little bit longer, see if we can even out those colors of just a little bit. Questionable whether with the white wash if that color difference will be seen, but we'll do what we can to even it out. Not exactly sure how this is going to turn out. I have a uh, Spanish moss from Dixie Bell. Didn't really want to do this in white. The white wash, I wanted to add a little color to it because of the color variations. But I'm going to do about three parts of water to one part paint and experiment with this just a little bit. Two twenty grit sandpaper. It's close to a hundred degrees today. I think the fact is like ninety-seven. When we glue these on, we're not gonna have a whole lot of time before that glue sets up. Um, for for these projects, I use Type Bond Two. Um, it, it, it's a good glue. The Type Bond Three is waterproof. We don't really need that here. We we cut these. I I did this purposefully. You put the matched pieces. You see how those are mirrored images of one another. You even get down to these little wormholes. They're, they're all lined up. So those can look really nice. And then we have this third piece that is not off of that same part of the tree. But I cut this so it kind of follows the grain pattern. See here, uh, right in there, it kind of splits and separates. But it kind of ties it in. So that's, that's the orientation. I'm gonna put these in. Uh, this way, I just thought it was too big a, a variance. That, that doesn't look that well together. So we're gonna do it this way. On, on these thicker veneers, it, it's not nearly as big as concern, but after you've cut these, one side's exposed to, to new wood and, and new air, and the other side is not. So. So typically when I cut these, I'll stack them and clamp them for a couple of days. If you could put a little spacer, they're called stickers, in between there, that's the best. Um, now on these thinner ones, they, they can like instantly start shriveling up. But, but these are a lot easier to clamp. You can even just put a board on top of that. We can get this side clamped pretty easily. 
Um, over here, we need to use weights. What I like to do is not glue all three at one time. One thing I also do, is you might not even be able to tell, but I put like a two degree chamfer on these. When you only have one side exposed, that leaves room for any dust, dirt, whatever. So only the top needs to be touching. And you tend to get a much tighter fit that way. And that's not the seam. Right there is the seam. You see when they go together, it's pretty good. I just happened to notice there's a little gap up there at the top. I don't know if my board's not straight or that's perfectly flush. This is somehow not. Um, I don't think it's big enough deal to address because it's in that top corner. There's a nail there, that's what it is. The point is I have the nail, so I'm not gonna be able to pull that through. Right there it is, I'm just gonna pound it down. Okay, there we have a much tighter fit. And I just took a little saw and just gouged out a place for that right up over the top. We have very little time to work when we get that glue. We need to have everything ready. I have my weights behind me and I want to get a clamp right here. Have the edges down. I'll, I'll put the glue down, put these here, put a clamp here, and then set the weights along there. Especially want to get the edges. Tight as it is, we'll give that maybe an hour or so. When you do this, you want to pay particular attention to these edges, especially if you cut them at a flat 90. When that glue dries, that'll prevent that from sliding right up against there. And if you ever go into a woodworker shop, you'll see it's just a regular drinking straw. This is little hat. You just take your straw Right along that edge, and all of your glue is gone. Best way to remove glue from the edges. We'll get that little corner bead out. If you want to save the turtles, you can just clean that straw out, squeeze it out, and ready to go for the next time. Not too long ago, there was an article in a uh, woodworking journal that talked about a, a, a finger can pick up 13 nanometers of variance when you're rubbing it across there. Now, I have no idea what a nanometer is as far as how to explain it. I had to look it up. And a nanometer is one billionth with a B one billionth of a meter. So our fingers can pick up 13 billionth of a meter. So, so 13 nanometers. And I had no idea what kind of reference that was. So I looked it up. A human hair is about 80 to 100,000 nanometers. It's always maybe a good practice just to run your fingers over it and start training your brain to your fingers. Many of you have seen this little trick. 
can just take some water, show exactly, so you can see how these, it, it darkens that up just a bit. And I book match these. Um, of course, these are three veneers, so really I should have put that in the center and then split those, but I didn't think of that. I like to, when I'm gluing up these bigger pieces, shimmy it back and forth a little bit. <clears throat> that glue will then get into all those areas. When we are dealing with veneers, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. So we're, what we're trying to do here is, is square up all of these gaps on this drawer. So on this one, when, when I said I got lucky, what I mean is the camera wasn't rolling when I started throwing stuff around the shop. <laughs> There's a couple of ways to do, do the centering with the spacers, um, depending on the layout of the drawer. You know, some of the drawers uh, kind of go over the top. Those tend to be a little bit easier because um, you can shift the veneer where it needs to be. Uh, on these where they're inset and they're designed to be flush with the frame of the drawers, these can be a little troubling and that is these veneers can have a slight variance in the width and you know sometimes when you're dealing with a small area 16th of an inch it's very noticeable if they're not centered and done right so what i have learned in doing these is your outside shims exactly the same width so these four pieces right here are the same width and then we can deal with the middle here. So this one is has presented a little bit bigger challenge, but we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that because there's like a little dovetail on the bottom of this. I'll probably glue it back on. It's too complicated to get in and out while we have that on there. So as we see, that gap looks really good. So what we have is this is a straight edge and this is a straight edge. So all we have to do really then check the edge on the other one. And if this one is relatively straight, then we know we can just adjust the width of this and we'll be good. So let's take a look and see. All right, so we have our shims over here so we know this side and this side will be seen. So when we look at that, that's, that's pretty good too, but what what I'm seeing that the camera may not pick up is I don't think this is plumb. Actually, that's not, not, not too bad. I think I'm happy with that actually. Less work than I thought. So now all we have to do really is decide how much we will plane off of this piece. We know some has to come off, but let's just see how tight. Not a lot. Um, I have a planer 
I'm going to run it through that, but you know, you can sand it down. Uh, there's a number of ways to do that. I'm going to try to see if I can leave that little dovetail on there, but it does make it quite difficult. And, you know, we're going to see that needs to go up as you can see how how it comes down so we're going to get some nails and glues and clamps on there on that but let's go ahead and check this it's going to be a little tight because of the shims but when those come off that'll that'll be good right, i need to kind of square that edge off or at least graduate it a little bit and that top gap i'm not worried about that'll get adjusted actually i i don't think that's real bad because we're going to gain a little bit when we remove these shims pretty centered on there and we can always fine tune just it when we're done so i think i'm good with that so when we get that centered that's going to be pretty good a little bit of the tricky part we've got to that put in there. I'm wondering if a lot of people, including me, underestimate the gripping power of glue. Also need to get this push right there where we clamp that down. That looks pretty good. The top needs to go over just a little bit. As always with any wood or staining we do, I always the Minwax pre-stain opens up the pores it's been a while since i've did anything with the ambrosia maple wormy maple whatever you want to call it so i usually take a scrap piece this is the danish oil the natural a little more clear than what we used on the drawers and then i have some of the wonderful dixie bell uh, clear coat satin i just put it on there to see what it's going to look like with the particular veneers that I made. So here's just the clear coat, the Dixie Bell clear coat. I kind of like that. I kind of like the Danish oil too. Um, so I won't really be able to determine until I'm gonna get these drawers put in. And then I'm gonna bring the other drawers out and then I'll be able to get a little more of an indication what what that is going to look like so we have that in there now and i'll go get those drawers I'll see what that's going to look like and get these sides stained too i gotta sand these a little more i only want to 180 i'm going to go ahead and do, do two, 220 on those you've probably seen this little jar laying around that is just some fabric softener watered down about two to one, something like that. Uh, two parts wire to one part fabric softener. Makes these old paint brushes last a long time. 400 grit sandpaper here. And I'll go over these real quick. Mineral spirits. So the dirt, see that there? Otherwise that just gets ground into whatever you're sanding. Go ahead and use the uh, Dixie Bell clear coat. Shake it. I think it gives a better finish if you give it a good mix also. The first coat I just put on a fairly thin coat just to seal it. I checked the weather and it's a uh, 
642 degrees again today. So I brought it into a little room I built a while ago that has an air conditioner and it has served as several things, including a little paint booth when it's hot. You've seen where I just typed in there trying to get an ocean theme. And about four or five years ago, I started this little one word description of the piece that I'm trying to do. So this was supposed to be a nautical theme. So I just named this piece Ocean. And then throughout the build process, I remind myself of that word and it helps me decide on some of the finished techniques. So I tried doing the top of this dresser to get an ocean theme. You'll see at the end where I actually swapped out the bottom and the top drawer because of this theme and the color, the difference in the coloration of the wood made it seem more like a beach and then where the wood gets darker, it just kind of reminded me of a beach view where the light is the sand and the darker wood starts the ocean. It's not. So you see this here, I just painted the top and, and there's some brush strokes in there and those are going to dry just fine and level out. Um, so this will have a decent finish on it. I'm gonna try this um, semi-gloss, it's called Ivory Bisque. I'm considering this and maybe even the Pixie Bell paint for the top handles. So we're just gonna try a few things to see what they look like. If we have to redo them, we'll redo them. See what those end up looking like. 